Um, yeah, I mean, look at the comments. We'll see. We'll see what people say. Um, great. Do people like our sweet hero image for the Metal Gear review? Your your the one that you made? Yes. That, I, like I honestly spent way too much time making that stupid thing. Um, they can hear us. People can hear us. They can hear you guys. It isn't yeah. cutting out at all. Um, nope, nothing. No one's saying. It says hear you very well, according to Golden Crow. Um, so we'll start in a minute or two. Let me check my email and make sure that nothing is on fire. Everything's on fire. Every everything is on fire. Okay, it's so all I, just like ton, you just got like eight emails <laughs> from me. It could be yeah. Uh, that that does happen. Um, exploit recordings. <laughs> Golden Crow wants to know which one of you is sexy Arthur. <laughs> Nobody. <laughs> That's a, yeah. That not not one of us. It turns out. <clears throat> I have a sexy Arthur cosplay that I do. That's uh, terrifying. <laughs> yeah. You you've been working on that one for E three this year? Yeah. Well, com it's Comic Con. It should be ready by Comic Con. Great. It's just a it's a just a black T shirt, but it's like very. <laughs> it's Mike, like, did you get your like, Comic Con stuff sorted? <clears throat> um. Well, I am. I've been going to Comic Con for so long that I have. Uh, I my press access is pre-approved. Oh. It has been for a long time. You. Yeah. So all those all those people lining up for uh, badges. That's not something that I have to subject myself to, fortunately. Well, it wasn't the winding up thing. Um, it's just like getting, I mean, first of all, getting press passes to, uh, to Comic-Con is fucking awful. I've actually never had an issue with that. I think maybe because I was going to Comic-Con, because I've been going for like seven years, and it was not the, the, the show it was seven years ago. Uh, sure, sure. Um, and now it's it, it's always been relatively easy for me to get in the show. Last year, trying to get to mid in last minute was a uh, was a problem. But what's what's interesting about this conversation that people in the chat don't realize is that um, Metal Gear Rising Revengeance is actually a story of Raiden trying to get into Comic Con. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, well, kind of a spoiler there, but yeah. My bad. Sorry. That's right. I know. I know it's not really revealed until the last act. Yeah. When you fight Kevin Smith in Hall H. <laughs> <laughs> It's a good fight, though. I mean, getting to kill Kevin Smith is really satisfying. Uh, all right, so I think we can start. Uh, yeah, just a do. word of warning that I am probably not as good at this game as Mike is. So uh, Mike is gonna Mike is gonna give you tips live, is what we decided. Okay. Yeah. That this should be good. We uh, can tell and, you how to not be bad at this. Is the stream quality okay for everybody? Does it seem like it's running at sixty frames a second? Um, it's supposed to be. <clears throat> can't really tell right now. I mean, right right now I'm just seeing a polygon logo. Yeah, my awesome polygon logo. It was oh, awesome. there it is. Uh, all right. Well, it's fired up. So, what have you played so far, Arthur? Uh, just the first couple of chapters. I got to the Mistral fight and then mm -hmm. stopped. <laughs> okay. Uh, because there are parts of that boss fight that I really dislike immensely. Yeah, that's I think the weakest boss fight in the entire game, and unfortunately, that's it's the first pretty basically. early. Yeah, I mean the you know the I think the the LQ eight four I fight is is pretty good. It's I, that's actually I think a really good um, almost tutorial in a way that really teaches you just how critical parrying is in this game. So you don't really get a great sense of that before the LQ eight eight four I fight, um, but. Yeah, the Mistral fight is, I mean, that's, that's, good. that's like, it's hey, pulse. yeah, it's like, hey, this is crazy confusing, and our camera really sucks. First head um, the good music, though. Really good, Contact us on really good uh, soundtrack for that fight, but it's, prob it's probably the, the least impressive, because it's really just kind of a, a spammy type of fight. I mean, like, pretty much all the music in this game is... is good if you're into it i mean if you right. hate that kind of music you're just going to hate all of the music in this game well it's the kind of music that i wouldn't listen to ever outside of a game like this 
but I think it's really complementary to everything that's happening, uh, just narratively and action-wise and aesthetically. It's you know. So Arthur, I don't know if this is technically streaming at 60 frames per second, but I will say it looks super smooth to me. Suck it, tree. That tree had it coming. Ah! Yeah. Uh, so this is the big. This is blade mode. That's that's the big like. The one thing about the combat system that I think really sets it apart from any other hack and slashy action game, right? Since Ninja Gaiden, basically, or well, Bayonetta on 360 ran, ran at 60 frames per second. No, I was talking about Blade Mode specifically. Not, oh yeah. Not yeah. Yeah. And, uh, so <coughs> I just uh, just to, to jump in here, I did just change the quality to best finally, and it does look like you're running at 60 frames per second. You deserve the best quality, Mike. I do. Uh, speaking of, we should probably do some quick introductions since this is a stream, even though we're a couple minutes in now. Uh, I'm Phil Kohler. I'm the Deputy Reviews Editor. Um, I'm just here talking, taking questions, um, being joined by Mike McWhorter. That's me, Mike McWhorter, Senior Reporter, Polygon. I wrote, uh, I, I played Metal Gear Rising Revengeance for review, and Phil and Arthur were kind enough to edit and make that thing totally awesome. And then uh, Arthur Arthur Geese is uh, here with us, playing the game. Say hi, please. Arthur. Hi. Well, right now I'm watching the game. Edge of film. That's true. I can just skip and, that. And it's a Metal Gear game, so there's probably going to be a bit of watching. Yeah. That fucking asshole that hit me kept me from getting an S rank. <laughs> <laughs> Got to parry that shit, man. Got a parry. How are, how are you feeling? How are you feeling about the parry? Uh, I think it's kind of inconsistent. Good. So I've seen different reports on the. I've seen some people seem to really like it, and some people. I've seen a couple of reviews and a couple of of people who've like played the demo and stuff saying that they don't. That sort of the same way as Arthur, they're feeling like it's a little inconsistent. So there, <laughs> there are a couple tricks that I think you have to learn about blade mode, uh, specifically. Specifically, the the um, the window of opportunity that you have for uh, basically blocking and parrying and counterattacking. So, <clears throat> you know, pushing towards your attack and hitting uh, light attack will 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 block. But you know, if you basically if Raiden holds out his sword to block, he he can only do that. He can only hold it out for a certain number of frames. Um, so it's really all about timing and making sure that you learn a little bit about how enemy attacks work. Um, so there is a little bit of memorization, enemy familiarization that's required, but it's really just kind of figuring out the timing. There's a little secret up there you can get. Uh, Mike, some people in the chat room were talking about, um, you know, about the, the cutscenes and particularly the little forced walking segment that Arthur had to do there. Mm -hmm. Um, you did say uh, most of the, the most of that stuff can be skipped in right subsequent playthroughs, right? Uh, yeah, I think you can actually like this cutscene. You can't skip, but those ones that throw up a little um, you know holographic heads-up display, that's definitely when you can skip. If you just jam on the Y button on the 360 controller or the triangle button, you can cycle through those really quickly. And same with any kind of codec conversation that you initiate yourself through Arthur. the game's menu. I feel like you didn't like that guy very much. You um, just cut him into pieces. I, I mean, I don't like any guys very much. You can use augment mode to see where the enemy so is located. I should probably change the title of this live stream. Oh yeah, that would that would probably make some sense. <laughs> Apologies for that, guys. It's uh, it's getting changed. So, uh, Arthur, hey, I noticed you didn't do the um, was it, I guess it's called like the ninja attack, what which is, is that. Which is the drop down attack that you can do on bad guys? Basically, so you're just like you're like in there. You're like the first man in the battle. You could have saved that. You could have saved that poor civilian. Yeah. So you know, I I think that like right here you could, you know, I, I see you're doing a lot of ninja run stuff. Yeah. But I wouldn't rely on that too much. Um, and I think that that those guys with the rocket propelled grenades, like they should, they're a good indicator that you shouldn't be using it too much because yes, you can deflect bullets. Ooh, nice little combo, Arthur. Um, Where is this asshole that's shooting rocket propelled grenades at me? No, you just killed him. Oh well, there's that one. <clears throat> I guess 
so good. <laughs> so that, yeah, that was the thing that you brought up in your review, Mike. Uh, you you really love just the uh, the feeling you get when you when you rip out that weird cybernetic spine thing. Yeah, I mean, just like the sound design on that is so strong. Um, and that, you know, that's just those little mini cutscenes that they throw at you all the time, just so so beautifully animated. And Sean, Sean in the chat was crushing this game. I do. <laughs> look at that. I mean, look at Redden's ass. Look at that. Thing. I mean, that's a Metal Gear thing. <laughs> yeah. Like, just Kojima has a thing for supple butts. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, he does. I, uh, Sean in the chat was wondering, uh, for a game that's, that isn't really a stealth game, why does it have an alert monitor at all? Well, there are a few stealth elements to this game. Like, the, the segment that Arthur just completed, there is a guy, there's a civilian there that you can save if you want to. And really the only way to do that is through some, some pretty careful stealth, um, like taking out some of the soldiers one by one. We know Arthur doesn't. Arthur, Arthur doesn't, doesn't care about him. civilians. <laughs> I actually, it's been so long since I played it that uh, I forgot how to sneak. Well, you can, um, there's not, there's really no, like, sneak mechanic necessarily. You will get cardboard boxes and, and drums. Um, you can hide in those things, but it's really just using that augmented vision mode to know where enemies are uh, and just carefully take them out one by one so that, uh, you know, you don't really have too much attention to yourself. So when you, when you, um, crush one of those spine things, you get, uh, refilled energy, right? Um, yeah. Is, is there any other bonus to those? Are you getting, like, more experience points for doing that or something like that? Well, now yeah, you are. Getting, so... uh, a load of the pretty bad camera in this game. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think one way to compensate that is, is, like I said, not using Ninja Run for everything. Like, you should... I'm not gonna try to tell you how to play the game, either, but... You <laughs> might benefit from just going toe to toe with that gecko right there instead of running around. Like you can just walk right up to the thing and start attacking it. And as long as you're carefully parrying all of his kicks, you're there gonna be go okay. Right. Now, keep um, for but to get back to uh, oh shit, what were you just asking? So? Uh, about the about no about the uh, the the spine things that you're cr crushing. If it was giving, oh yeah. Like, if you do that, do you get like extra, um, I guess they're not called experience points, but whatever you're doing that, that you're leveling up with? Yeah, they're called battle points. Battle points. And you can see Arthur has about 70,000 of them right now. <clears throat> um, Is that, I don't know if that's good or bad. Get more. That's, that's fine. You know, you, you are basically going to spend those battle points on upgrades for Raiden's uh, life, uh, his fuel cells that... Um, you know, that let him go into blade mode. Um, and new outfits, uh, other weapons that you will acquire throughout the game. So you're going to spend all your battle points on stuff like that. So whenever you do those um, cuts where you're slicing people up and snatching those spines, that's called the Zandatsu. And you are graded on various performances uh, with, in each multiple times per chapter. And you know how many Zandatsu kills you do is is part of that grading process. So yeah, it's definitely to your benefit to do. To, to What's comment. strange is that's also one of the ways that um, Arthur grades me when we have our employee reviews. Yeah, I can see that. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, like uh, so the upgrades are uh, Raiden's health, um, the number of fuel cells he has. The rate at which you absorb fuel through his blade. So if you're doing like you know heavy attacks with the Y button on the 360 controller, you can um, absorb energy from you. But you're essentially absorbing life force through those enemies. Um, and and you're also using that to buy uh, to buy new moves, right? Yeah, so there are moves associated with certain weapons. Okay. So <clears throat> there are a set of moves that Raiden can use, you know, just for his um, just for his sword. Um, like, you can unlock a, a really nice dive kick um, in the game. And then when you get some other weapons later on, you can unlock special moves for those as well. Like, uh, when you fight Mistral, you will get her staff, her pole arm. And you can you can unlock special moves, including one Raiden does kind of like a 
I really feeling. appreciate that the game is, is doing everything it can to demonstrate how fucking awful the camera is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You're not, it's not, it's, the camera it looks rough. I'll yeah, give you I, that. Yeah, the, the camera is absolutely not the highlight of the game. Um, um, we have a, a couple of questions uh, from people here. Copy Jesus wants to know, does the game lean heavily into Metal Gear lore, or is it accessible for someone who's never played a Metal Gear game? I, I would say it's definitely accessible. I mean, I have played... Like four or five Metal Gears. Um, it's probably the most accessible Metal Gear has been in a real long time. Yeah, I mean, there are definitely a lot of nice references and nods to Raiden's character uh, as he was presented in, in Metal Gear Solid 2 and 4. Um, but I, I don't think you really need to know almost anything about the fiction. Um, because most of the characters are uh, unique to this game. Mm hmm. And they, it's, it's, there's never any, there are very few like revelations that happen in this game where you're like, oh shit, that that's what they were talking about in Metal Gear Solid 2. Was whatever. that a disappointment yeah. to you? Because it seems like you're into the Metal Gear games. I am so not into the Metal Gear games. I have sure. I like I have no idea what's going on. Like I played Metal Gear Solid 4 twice, and I'm like, I don't Arthur, really remember we're, what happened. we're hearing Arthur right now. Just realize like Mike was the t the worst choice to review this. <laughs> well, no, because I know that Mike is into this kind of game, and I can't review everything. Yeah, well, I mean, I, I'm I'm more of a I, I would say I'm more of a Platinum Games fan. Sure. I mean, I like so I I, I think Metal Gear Solid 4 kind of annoyed me. After, the more I thought about it, the more I played it. And I didn't really want to play a stealth game after that, which is why I was into this. Um, but you know, I, I have some sense of the Metal Gear fiction, but definitely not. It's, I'm not as intimately familiar with that as other people are. Look for Mike's review of Ground Zeroes this fall. <laughs> I don't know don't. who we have on staff that's into Metal Gear actually. I, I'm, act I'm actually pretty into Metal Gear. Uh, Dave Tack. Why did I Dave hire you? Dave Tack. I don't know Dave why Tack. Tack. Dave Tack. Dave Tack. Dave Tack. <laughs> Mike's just like anyone but Phil. Don't let Phil near any of the shit. No, Dave, Dave knows his Metal Gear shit. Seriously. I believe that. Yeah. Um, Does Dave think Kojima is a genius? Uh, but you'd have to ask him. Do you want me to get him on the phone? <laughs> Actually, kind of. Uh, we, could, Flame... <laughs> we could bring him in on Skype. Flame Viper wants to know, do you have any complaints about the game? Any any major complaints other than the, the camera? The as far as gameplay bad. stuff goes. Um, no, no major complaints. There's definitely a sense later on in the game that you feel like some corners were cut in order to get this game out. Um, there are a few chapters that are kind of in repetitive locations, and then there's one chapter that's just like super, super short. Um, <clears throat> but I, I saw I, I saw one friend complaining about the fact that they they have a a sewer level. Do they yeah. seriously have a sewer level in this game? They do. You you should have already been there, Arthur, if you fought Mistral. Oh, no. No, no, it's right after that. Sorry. Okay. Yeah, no, I stopped yeah. when I was yeah. fighting Mistral. Uh, he's, he's not I mean, you know, look at, look at Platinum <laughs> Games' like, level design, and it's not the most... You know, I don't think that's their strength. That's I think, a nice I think, way of putting it, Mike. Yeah. I think part of it too that's that's worth considering is from from all reports, Platinum did not. This game's been in development for a long time. Platinum has not been working on this game for very long. Right. Right. Um, they they were given the game maybe around a year or a little bit longer ago. Um, so, you know, if 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 it's kind of short, if the levels aren't super crazy detailed or something, there might be uh there might be some explanations for that well there's always explanations for that there's always oh a for sure for i'm just saying it's 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 interesting to think about that um also thanks to sean mcelroy we have a response from dave tack uh dave tack says he does not think that kojima is a genius he knows he is disqualified <laughs> So yeah, and this is one of the things I was a little bit disappointed in is that you do, you know, I think this this is definitely not a spoiler because this is in key art, but like you do buddy up with this, you know, cybernetic wolf later on in the game, and he kind of becomes your your partner, but he's really not used in any interesting ways gameplay from a gameplay perspective. There are some narrative modes. Yeah, here you go. This is 
this may be the most obvious illustration of why this game's camera really blows. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So yeah, you'd mentioned um, I know in one of the one of the original drafts of the reviews, you had mentioned two two boss fights in specific. Is this is this one of them? Yeah, this 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 one and the Mistral fight. Okay. But this oh. is where you like you learn like, hey, you gotta parry all this shit. So uh, Wario sixty four says I'm not even watching Arthur play. I'm just looking at the Polygon logo. Uh, <laughs> Wario sixty four also asks, what's so bad about sewer levels? I think I think the thing with sewer really levels. Care, but... I think the thing with sewer levels is it's just like you know, like in a big, crazy, over-the-top action game like this, they could they could put anything they want. They could they could take you anywhere they want to take you, and to like put you in a sewer is just kind of like a like a boring location. You know? So, Mike, just to clarify, if it flashes red, I can't parry it, right? No, if it flashes red, it, it indicates an attack, uh, and. The, when it flashes orange, that's basically like when you are you just that's the just time about to parry. to parry. Okay. Yeah. So what I would recommend that you do in this fight is not run around. Is just stand your ground, try and keep your eye on the dog, and parry. And parry. Yeah. There you go. That's that's what you got to do. And attack. That's it. That's how you. That's how you do this shit, man. Um. A couple of people have brought up that they wish that they wish the game had a uh, a PC version, which I agree would be cool. But knowing uh, knowing Platinum's history, I don't think is very likely. Oh god, this is the worst fucking camera ever. <laughs> <laughs> Arthur well, doesn't like I, it. It's it's fixated on showing you his ass. Well, so I actually heard a little bit about that. They they really just didn't have time to. Fix the camera. And How do you not have game? time to fix the camera? <laughs> <laughs> this is going perfectly. This is going yeah. exactly how I wanted it to. Uh, people in the chat, if you have any any questions about the game, about Mike's review, about hey Mike, you did a video review. I did. Well, actually, hold on. There's, there's some questions I think we need to, to get back to. Uh, sure. Yeah. <clears throat> what, are we, what are we talking about? Um, let's see. Well, we'll sh let's see. Sean, I guess we addressed what, why there's an alert monitor in the game. Um, I keep hearing how this game is four hours long, but does it lend itself to multiple playthroughs? Um, that's from Uber Explodey. Uh, I so the game, the game clock uh, is not does not count the the uh, the full time that you are playing this game. It really only counts the amount of time that you are playing uh, the game, and it only counts your best time per level. Yeah, so that that's the thing that I think um, a lot of people pointed out is. Platinum does a weird thing with their clocks where they don't include times that you've died and restarted the level, just your your best time completing it, essentially. Right. So I would say that it took me on my first playthrough, uh, which I did at an event in December, it took me about eight, somewhere between eight and nine hours to get through the game. And I actually didn't make it all the way through. I made it to the, to the very last boss. And then when I played it again, I would say it took me about it took me about six to seven hours because I spent a little more time looking at uh, Kodak conversations because I really just sprinted through the game the first time. Mm -hmm. So I, I did some kind of um, optional Kodak conversations to just kind of flesh out some of the characters and some of the, the story. Uh, and there's a, so there's some good stuff in there, so I definitely recommend that people sure uh, look at some of those conversations. So that's one um, of the other reasons that I gave this to Mike is because he basically beat this goddamn game at a preview event. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, with the exception of the last boss who is really uh, going to test a lot of people's patience. He is so really hard. I wanted to bring that up because I, I, I talked to a couple of friends last night who had reviewed the game and also reviewed it um, positively but um, who specifically did bring up the last boss. Obviously we don't want to get into spoilers about what the boss is, or, or the nature of the fight, or anything like that. But um, what's up with the last boss? Well, I'm not gonna tell you who he is or, or what the context of it is, but it, it is a tough fight, and I, I feel like it's maybe a little bit unfair in parts, and that it asks you to do some variations on blade mode attacks that you really haven't done before. Okay. Um, and That's it's it's nice. a little it's a little bit annoying. Um, so there's some like rote memorization that's required in this fight. I wouldn't say that it's you know out of character for Platinum to have a have a bad guy like this, especially a final boss in, in their games. Um, but if I can make a recommendation for people is, is that 
they would hold on to their what are essentially the, the revenge equivalent of rations um, for the final segment of that boss fight. I'm going to take that to heart. I have my copy sitting here and I'm definitely going to keep that yeah. in mind now. Yeah, so hold on to those rations because you may find yourself at a point in the game where you're um, you're kind of fucked. If you And I actually, when I finished the game for the second time, I had to start the final chapter all over again with that in mind. Um, so I could beat the game. Otherwise, I, I don't think I would have <laughs> would have been able to do it because uh, it's pretty tough. I just wanted to let you know, Arthur. I'm so proud of you right now. Yeah. Good work, Arthur. So proud. Of so you. the the way that I find the most success with parrying is just to spam the, in the direction of the enemy and, and hammer the X button. What would an AI know about? Yeah, I mean, you know that that fight. I actually the the one I did it the third time. I probably did it in about I'd say 90 seconds. Because I, you know, figured out how to fight him and came to came to grips with the camera. Because I did, I pretty much played it exactly as you played it the first time. I mean, I'm not at a point where I'm zen about this camera. Yeah. I'm still very annoyed. With my <laughs> yeah, and I, I, I think that you will be multiple times, especially when you're being like gangbanged by geckos and cyber cyborg soldiers, which happens fairly frequently. Which was um, the original uh, subtitle for the review. Gang bang by geckos. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, but it's a. Uh... Flame Viper wants to know about what are the. Uh, you, can, you mentioned that you get more weapons. What are the uh, What are the different weapons in the game? How do they work? So there are actually a lot more than I unlocked. Um, that you get three weapons from certain boss fights, um, and some of this stuff has been detailed uh, in. Um, in a lot of videos ahead of time. So if you really want specifics, you can go watch some of those videos, but um, there's one that's like a pole arm that's made of dwarf gecko arms. Um, it's kind of like a whip slash pole arm. Okay. Um, that's really like maybe a little too overpowered. And once you get it, it really changes the way that you, um, you know, you can fight enemies because you can basically, you know, when, when you're using Raiden's Blade, you're really do, doing one-on-one -on -one or one-on-two um, attacks. But with that blade, you can basically attack in a full 360-degree arc around Raiden and, oh, this you know, is, take this, off. Yeah, Mike, here you go. I really dislike this part. <laughs> <laughs> That's why it, it, this segment, this is why this is in the video review, because it's like, here are, here's another perfect illustration of why the camera. Oh, yeah, the, I saw this part. I saw this part in the review and was like, that doesn't look like it's going to be very fun. Yeah. So Alex uh, G. Dorman asked LQ84 L84 confirmed for working on this game. Yes, 84 did the localization on this game. And from what I understand, they contributed to some of the best jokes in this game. Sure. So there's some, I have no some idea good humor in there. Right there. Yep. Oh. Uh, the shame, first time shame. I played this, I died like 20 times. This is, so this is I would good. recommend that you jump frequently here, Arthur. Continue to jump instead of just running. Uh, this is a good point to bring up this question from Shameful Sinner. Uh, are checkpoints in good areas, or do you have to play a good amount of time to get back to your place when you when you die? No, they are they are very generous. Okay. In this game, there are probably, I would say that probably somewhere between eight and twelve checkpoints per chapter, and. <clears throat> And uh, some of the, some of that depends on the on the length of the chapter. Some of them are like an hour, hour and a half. Some are only like 15, 20 minutes. Sure. Um, but yeah, I, I don't think anybody will complain about the the number of checkpoints in this game. A lot of people in the chat room screaming Raiden when he died. Yeah, mm -hmm. it happens. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. you know, I actually know that I this is this is the bit that I played during E3. So now I I remember why it looked familiar. Yeah. Nice one, aren't there? That's some, that's some good moves right there. There's a, some rocket launchers down on the ground, too, if you want to use those. It's so much more fun to hit things with my sword. Yeah, it, it really is. is. And, and like, actually getting into the sub-menu system for, to access... Is uh, right and sub Yeah, that, that kind of sucks. Because Raiden has to be standing, like, perfectly still to uh, to access those, and I really don't set up that way. Uh, Mike, tell us a little bit about... Uh, the story and why why you enjoyed the story because I think that's going to be something that's um, that people you know, obviously sure uh, obviously people who are really into uh, into Metal Gear might be coming to this for, for plot stuff but I think 
I think the story might be even a little bit crazier than regular Metal Gear. Yeah, okay, so, I mean, look at what's happening on screen right now. Raiden <laughs> is a fucking cyborg ninja look at it. leaping look at over it. a helicopter and, like, slicing a helicopter into millions of chunks, right? That's the story, too. I mean, the story is just completely batshit insane. Um, you know, it's it's so ridiculous that I, there are moments where I, I just laughed out loud, but, like, laughing with the game instead of at it. Look at because that I just thought, Yeah, look at that. If only I there were a zoom. Walk. Um, yeah, I mean, it's... So, I, it's not, like... It's certainly not highbrow entertainment by any means. This is just, like, completely crazy... You know, summer blockbuster, stupid but, action but, stuff. And and the thing that I think is is probably redeeming about it is that it's not necessarily. Whereas, I think a lot of the the other Metal Gear games maybe take themselves, some might say, a little too seriously, despite yeah. also being crazy. Mm -hmm. This game doesn't seem to take itself seriously really at all. No, it really doesn't. And like just the just the core concept of of why Raiden is continuing this fight after. Um, engaging Desperado for the first time is just is, is, is kooky and like you know I, I think when when you get into the next chapter and you see how that chapter starts I mean it starts with with a complete lack of serious uh, a serious approach it's it's, just, it's corny it's goofy and but I, I really like it and the last boss is like just the, the most perfect illustration of how this game just goes so off the rails plot wise so, um, I really liked it. Um, it's, I would definitely not say it's Oscar caliber writing by any means, but it's hugely entertaining. Shameful Sinner wants to know if the game is like Vanquished in that it's nonstop action. That's pretty much. Fair, I mean, yeah. yeah, I mean, there's a lot of, there's a lot of downtime presented to you in terms of, you know, cut scenes and, and narrative stuff. And, and there are a couple different approaches to some of the action um there are it seems like the the codex stuff is very uh optional right so like you could have more downtime if you're spending a lot of time doing codex stuff yeah i mean there is there are a few kind of stealth based sequences peppered throughout this game um that are not you know really restrictive restrictively designed in terms of really adhering to some kind of uh, strict stealth based gameplay model but there are kind of lower key moments where you might Most just want to avoid detection, and it's you know it helps it helps break up Use the constant action. Um, I, I I definitely felt like Vanquish was right, way more action oriented and like maybe a little bit too so, abrasive at times. How do I? I think I think we're on the I think we're on the Twitch homepage right now. How do so, I sneak? How am I sneaking? So, so here's what you can do. So press up on the um, on the uh, D pad. Yep. And you know you're gonna get that augmented vision mode. And you're gonna. I don't mind. They see me. Yeah. Well, the, the the key here is not really being sneaky. It's you really need to go get the. Um, what they're asking you to do is go sever the arm of one of these cyborg soldiers, so that you can use that arm to bypass that security gate. And fortunately for you, that that soldier is not one of the three that you're engaging right now. But the the one you want to go after is. Um, Closer to the beginning of, of this section. Oh, okay. And uh, you can, what you can do is you can go back, use your augmented vision to, to see him, and sneak up behind him and do that and, and like, sever the arm off. Um, while he's blade alive. Mode. Yeah. So just sneak up behind this guy, go into blade mode as soon as you get behind him, and then just chop, chop the arm off. And this is actually one of the collectibles in the game that people are going to want to go go after um, uh arthur we're on the twitch uh front page right now so don't fuck up uh, please phil did you ever change the title for this uh yeah i did okay so you see he's got that little marker on his arm it's like yeah yo, go, go get this guy's arm oh well there you go chop that arm off chop the arm off arthur i, I tried to it. Chop oh, you didn't do it you are didn't you do it fucking kidding me you missed him well start over no it's okay that they'll actually be like 
that they'll just say like, oh, you can just cut through them. <laughs> right. Don't worry about it. It's the principle of the thing. It's right. It is. Point. Yes. Also, uh, like, did you guys notice hear the the Kotaku rumor that uh that somebody in the chat room just brought it up? Money? Yeah. Somebody in the chat room said, tell Arthur Kakaku just said PlayStation 4 will require a premium subscription. He will say, I told you so, or something. Oh, man. If, if I could say more than I told you so. I don't know that if we're on the Twitch front page, I should probably not say the words that are going through my head right now. Like don't say those energy. words. Don't yeah, say no. those words. That, that, that sounds, sounds like, real that sounds like fucking it's familiar, stream. doesn't it? <laughs> uh, okay, wait. There's a question that I saw. Uh, is there anything that you cannot cut? Yeah, there's tons of things you can't cut. Um, you know, what? Like most of the most of the environments you can't really cut. You can cut like trees and boxes, and cars, and you can slice up the tank and everything, but you can't cut through most walls. Um, it just doesn't really work like that. So, cut how it. Do, how do they not have time to fix the camera? I don't know. From what I heard, that they were going to try to make some adjustments with the camera, like. <laughs> They were going to give you, like, you you felt that it kind of snaps back a lot behind Raiden when you don't really oh, want it to. Yeah. All right, so how do I? No, no, no. Keep this. Go, uh, get a... Go into blade mode. Cut that. Move. Sean wants to know Whoa. as the game as the game progresses. There you is, go. You got it. Is a uh, is Raiden a likable character? Bravo. Excellent work. He's definitely more likable than he was in Metal Gear Solid 2. Okay, um, I think that's where that question came from, from, from his character in Metal Gear Solid 2. Yeah. I feel like maybe he's a little bit flatter in this game as a character. Like, he, there, there is a little bit of development to his, his background and his uh, philosophy in terms of murdering all these people. But, um... You know he's he's fine. You know he's he's trying to be. He's just trying to be. He's not. Guy. He's not actively annoying. At least no, he's a not. lot of people in in Metal Gear Solid Two were kind of full on annoyed by him. Um, Dave Tack wants to know why did we stop talking about him? Um, well, that's, that's really all we had to say about. I mean, there's really not much to Dave Tack. Um, <laughs> it's mostly just uh, him being a Metal Gear fan, and that's yeah. it. He's, he's useful sentence. for for Metal Gear fiction and not that much else, unfortunately. But wow, sign <laughs> his boss. <laughs> uh, I know somebody earlier was asking um, if we... I got I cut off his arm. I'm just kidding. Dave Tax, awesome. He wrote a really good feature today about I don't know. Everybody should read I it. Love Dave Tack. So like stop crying, Dave Tack. His his feature today is is very good. Go read that when you're done watching us. Uh, Somebody earlier was asking if, the, if there are any major differences between the PS3 and 360 versions. Um, Mike, I know you only played the PS3 version. That's correct. Yeah. But Arthur, you're actually playing 360 now. Yeah, um, and I, Seems oh, like good. A lot of the stuff that people were talking about as a problem in the 360 demo don't, don't doesn't seem to be a problem in this. Like, I'm not seeing it tearing. Yeah, I mean, you know, I'm not qualified to make those kind of, you know, distinctions between how something looks on the 360 and PlayStation 3. I mean, that's, you know, I'm going to defer to Digital Foundry on things yeah. like that. Ooh, nice S rank, Arthur. And uh, base, I read it. I read a quickly read a report from those guys today, and they basically said that the the 360 version has a has an advantage on uh, frame rate in certain situations. Um, and it sounded like they were maybe cutscene situations, the, especially cutscenes that um, mask loading sequences. Huh. That Digital Foundry uh, article is actually somebody linked it in the chat right now. So if you're oh, in the okay. chat, yeah, you can go, go check it. Um, Otherwise, if you're if you're watching this archived, just Google Digital Foundry. I'm sure you'll be able to find it. Yeah, the they, stuff they said... the, the, the Platinum has done themselves port wise have, have been, has been really good. Like Vanquish was very very close mm -hmm. uh, on both platforms. Well, I think yeah. the thing the thing that was interesting too is I think uh, from reports, um, PS3 is the lead skew. Yeah. For, for this one, so a lot of people were wondering if if 360 would suffer for that reason. Yeah, I think they've they've you know had enough experience on both of these platforms at this point that they know how to make pretty good games for them. So, um, checks are in the mail, boys. Okay, Dave, uh, you actually you have my new address. I hope so. Because do you want to give that out on the? On yeah, the let me give you let me give you my address. Everybody, and social everybody security Dave, number also. Yeah, everybody but Dave mute. Um, the stream while I give out my personal information. See, my controller oh, battery didn't actually die, but the battery pack on it is just boned. 
Oh, man. Like the retaining thing that is just testicles. And now you can hear me throwing it around. <laughs> that's, that's what it sounds like. It sounds like there's a problem happening there. I'm grabbing uh, the battery pack from another controller on my desk. There we go. Okay, so head and uh, head and head and vice. Uh, I, actually, it makes a good point. Raiden wasn't the annoying character in Metal Gear Solid Two. It was Rose, and that's actually uh, it's actually a pretty sound theory. Yeah, um, it does make me feel good to hear that apparently Gaff is melting down over the PlayStation, uh, PlayStation <laughs> Network <laughs> charging thing. I. I don't I mean, want anybody to be you. sad, but I would yeah. like to rub that in someone's face at some point. <clears throat> Sorry. This is really compelling storytelling that I'm interrupting. I mean, you know, Xbox Live has tens of millions of, of paying subscribers. I would think that it would be to their benefit to yeah. match that sort of But anyway, I don't I don't uh, we don't know that that's actually true, that they're going to charge for certain services and if those services are going to include access to online gameplay or if they're going to include other services so just dodge a bullet let's wait let's wait we got about less than 24 hours before we i don't know that we're going to hear anything about pricing yeah we might, we might not okay good point we may not hear anything about pricing whatsoever what we will hear about is the playstation cloud maybe who knows maybe we'll man Vita 2. <laughs> they got to do uh, something about the Vita, right? Like, there has to be some time dedicated to that because they had the Japanese press conference and price cut. I wonder, yeah, I wonder if they'll just have a quick thing to say, like, oh, yeah, we're cutting the price here, too. Oh, yeah. You think They've got they, it. They Wario 64 says, I want meltdowns. And, like, let's be honest, we all want meltdowns all yeah. the time. Like, that's, that's what we're here for. I don't think, actually, I think um, Evil or Banned Meltdowns, <laughs> Wario. So, sorry, it's not going to happen. <laughs> Uh, yeah, Raiden's heart rate does really spike when he sees um, Mistral. You know what's what's, what's strange is, is about um, Kojima is is uh, well Konami or Kojima Productions is their their focus on butts, but the like complete removal of feet. Like yeah, he hates feet. I think if you like showed your foot during a, an interview with Hideo Kojima, he would just stand oh, up and leave. Oh, it's like a weird. So bad. <laughs> It's like a weird um, Rob Liefeld fantasy world. <laughs> well, it's funny because like today we had two reviews go up for games that like just have epic asses. Like, cause Crisis oh, yeah. is that way too. So uh, actually, this um, so this is where you would have benefited from doing the like ninja jump attack, Arthur. This is where I actually use stealth to my advantage to separate these these two geckos. Um, so what I did is I, I climbed up on the top of those, those uh, buildings that surround these areas and, and took out um, took out the geckos from above. Uh, Flame Viper's wondering, does this game have multiplayer? Which I no. do not believe there's any any sort of multiplayer. Are there any sort of like leaderboards or anything like that? I don't know. I don't think there are any leaderboards. At least I didn't see uh, those. And uh, when I was playing the game, I didn't see any in in, in the VR missions section. Um, so you think the the VR missions I wanted to bring up because that that seems like a cool thing, but you think that would be like the perfect place for that kind of like leaderboard, high score chasing thing? Right. Yeah. So I, I guess I, I'll I'll clarify that I was playing this on my debug PS3. Sure. And I was not signed into PlayStation Network when this was going on. Um, so I, to be honest, I don't know if there's any kind of leaderboards to those things, um, but I don't think that there is. I don't know that there is. Yeah. I mean, it's kind of, you know, I don't know that those VR missions are deep enough that you would really benefit from having leaderboards in there because some of them are like, like the the platinum rank or the S rank on them is like, you know, complete this in 14 seconds, and then those leaderboards are just getting down to like, you know, besting things in the hundredths of a second, and you know, who gives a shit? I do. There are people that crazy. Do. Yeah, there are there are people that do for sure. Those people need to get some help. Or let, watch our let stream. Them, let them play the game how they want, Mike. It's okay. You're so judgmental, Mike. I, I, I'm I not into speedrunning myself, but after watching the, the crazy, awesome games done quick marathon, which is just speedrunning community doing speedruns live, 
I have okay. a, I have a newfound respect yes. for it. So like, I, I no, I, I definitely appreciate the people who do those kinds of speed runs. I just don't really know that I could never do. I can't see the appeal of uh of um trying to speed run all these VR missions competitively online. Sure. So this is actually a section where you right can go back and. Okay, well you're gonna. It's gonna be more helicopters, dude. I know, so. but I didn't seem to have a problem right. with them before. So this is like a this is like a bonus thing. You don't have to do this. Yeah, they, the Boris will come up and say that they've called them back up, uh, and that you can engage them if you like. Uh, and it's really just a, an opportunity to, you know, play around with some new remixed combat scenarios and earn some more battle points. And to be angry at the camera some more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, these these helicopters really do suck. And this is of all the weapons that they of all the sub weapons that they offer you in this game, like. EMP grenades and surface-to-air missiles and homing missiles, things like that. Like the only thing I ever really found all that useful were the homing missiles, basically because of situations like this. Uh, there's just not a lot of strategy to fighting, and that's the thing that kind of sucks. Compared to like certain other enemies, that where... helicopter is playing kickball with the fucking Ferris wheel. Uh, in case you missed it. <laughs> I'm glad that this is being recorded for posterity. <laughs> Which, so, okay, speaking of, there, there, there brings up uh, something that I heard about the game that makes me think that I'm going to love it. Um, which I, I brought up with you earlier, Mike, um, off stream. At some point in the game, Raiden puts on a, a s sombrero. Yes, he does. Um, and, is, and a poncho. Is this supposed to be part of a disguise? <laughs> yeah. Actually, if if, uh, if Arthur does complete this mystical boss fight, then you'll you'll see Arthur. Oh, you won't yeah. see Arthur in a sombrero, but you will see. Well, in, a in my mind, it'll always be Arthur in a sombrero. But the the thing that really sold me on it though was like, because that sounds goofy and dumb in a way that I like. But yep. what really sold me on it was hearing that if if you try and stealth under a box while in this level. The sombrero goes on top of the box. Of course. <laughs> yeah. That's per know. that's perfect. That is that is perfect. The guards just like, oh, some other box of sombreros. <laughs> just like we always have uh, hanging around here in Mexico, just boxes of sombreros everywhere. So Arthur, can you can you like tap the? Uh, so are you using um, the right bumper to for ninja run? Is that right? Yeah. The okay. right trigger. Right trigger. So what with the uh, right bumper, does that give you any kind of like targeting lock on assistance? Uh, so there you go. Ready. Serious now. This better give me some energy or I'm gonna be sad. No spine. No spine. But you you have um, you have rations or whatever they're called. Should the, I uh, save or, those? You you you're gonna get them throughout the game, but you know you can just flip them on and have them auto recharge your health if you have them selected. Oh, I have I have maxed uh, out on them anyway. So. Yeah. So there you go. If you just set those up, it'll just you know it'll keep you in good health. Uh, and I, I don't think you really want for those things later on it's just at that last boss fight i would highly recommend having them you know you get so much uh, uh energy and and life from enemies <laughs> that i didn't really find myself using them that much but. um canad 7 is asking if this is a sequel or a prequel and does it connect to any story if he starts from this game it's technically so this takes place after metal gear solid 4 yeah, in my understanding. Something like four years after the events of that game. Um, but as we said earlier, it's not super tightly connected. So if you're, if you're not entirely familiar with the series, you're, you're probably going to be okay. Yeah. Yeah, it, it, st it stands on its own. I mean, you know, th there are some references to um, Raiden's family and things like that. But I wouldn't worry about it. You know, you can, you can play this game without really much Metal Gear knowledge. Uh, I need just a second to close the blinds in my apartment because right now is when the sun decides to shine the brightest. So just one second, guys. Sure. Yeah. Uh, Wobbly Snake points out um, those helicopters were flying way too low. 
I'm starting to think that this game is uh, not very realistic. Yeah, I hadn't really considered that, but yeah, it's probably probably not the most real. It's not it's not a helicopter sim, that's for sure. Uh, Nubasaur is asking if Polygon on Twitch is a regular thing. Um, this is our fourth or fifth one that we've done for a new release this year. Um, we're definitely planning to keep doing them for major new releases. We um, might do Assassin's Creed at some point this week. I know that I got a build of that. I just haven't had time. Oh, the, the DLC? Yeah. Cool. Yeah, and I'm sure uh, in a couple of weeks we'll do Tomb Raider. I don't know if there's anything else. What else big is coming out in the near future? We'll do. We'll keep doing them. We'll be doing more more streaming stuff. So yeah, it's it will be regular. All right. That's good. But. But yes. But. Epic. Uh, Ghost Talks asks if we're gonna do Starcraft. We'll probably do Starcraft, the uh, the expansion when that comes out. Yeah, I mean, but what do we do? Do we like stream the story mode? I don't know. I don't know what we do. Uh, I mean, I guess no, I could just stream while I'm reviewing it because we're not going to get that game early. Yeah, you could do that. But God of War, Ascension, are you guys? Uh, oh yeah, we'll do something with that. That's a fun little game. Judgment, yeah. There's lots. Of, there's some good things coming out. Um. Okay. Yeah. Next next month, there's a bunch of stuff coming out. So yeah, we'll yeah. we will be doing more more polygon streams. Definitely. Stay tuned to the site. We'll do news stories probably at least a day in advance before we do streams and then we'll have on the front page when we're streaming so so one of the things about about like checkpoints and battle points and uh, customizing Raiden is you can actually customize him at any time in the game so like you could just go into the um, menu and upgrade his you know fuel cells and his weapons and things like that How do it'll I do keep that? if you just hit the I think it's this select button or the back button um it's wh whatever button you use to access oh, codec conversations okay. so what that's going to do if you do hit that it's going to kick you back to the beginning of the um checkpoint but like i said earlier the, the checkpoints are pretty frequent that's but if weird you, yeah that's really weird yeah well let's take a tour of customization shall we yes but uh, yeah, like basically, whenever you, if you right after you get graded by the game for your performance, you can just then go into customization if you want to, and then you'll just be kicked back to that to that spot. So um, yeah, you can you can upgrade the strength of Raiden's sword. You can upgrade uh, the the damage that it causes. You can upgrade the rate at which it absorbs energy from from foes, and you can upgrade the rate at which it expends energy in blade mode. Um, and I think there are five, <laughs> five of the five levels of each upgrade on his sword alone. It's not so. What? How do you get like the ability to buy more stuff? Because I just... so th I, yeah, I think you you unlocked it, but then I think you won't be able to get to the next um, level of those upgrades until the until the next chapter. Yeah, so this is where you will buy like red and sombrero costume oh, and various various other costumes. So theoretically, at theoretically. some point, I will be able to play through the whole game in the sombrero costume. That's absolutely true. Game of the year, with maybe the exception of the prologue, in which sure. you might be restricted to Raiden's pre-super augmented cyborg ninja form. Sure. But yeah, you can buy all this shit. I got a lot of points. Mm -hmm. Sorry, Sean, you can't dress up riding yet. Not, not. I think not until at least the end of the next chapter. I love that it tells exactly what muscle it improves. Mm -hmm. That is excruciatingly Japanese. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, that falling lightning is pretty nice. That that dive kick that um, is basically like a modified version of that sliding kick that kicks him up into the air. It's just one of those attacks that will uh, like instantly put you into Zandatsu mode. It's pretty cool. But um, I would so yeah, you buy all those moves. I would definitely recommend um, like fuel cell upgrades pretty early. Um, well, now because, you tell me. Well, I didn't know you were going to go on a battle point spending spree. Well, I had it. On, I wanted to spend skills. it. I'm from America. Yeah, no, you. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's true. All right, 
Uh, well, that's but yeah. There, there's a lot of there's a lot of things in there to to upgrade, and I'm on my uh, like I'm about two thirds of the way through my second playthrough on like New Game Plus, and I still haven't unlocked everything. So uh, one one thing I want to bring up right now before I forget about it, I just got confirmation from Mr. Russ Frushtick. Um, tomorrow, after the Sony press conference ends, we will be streaming out a Polygon live show. Yeah. Um, with with various members of the Polygon staff calling in to uh, give our impressions and talk about the whatever the big news ends up being. So if you if you guys are enjoying the stream, be sure to. Follow us on Twitch and watch out for that live show tomorrow. And check out our stuff at Polygon.com. Yeah, that's a good website. I like it's that a website. Place. Yeah. <laughs> yes, it is um, a website. Mm -hmm. Does anything improve the penis muscle? That's that's totally. That's inappropriate. In inappropriate. Unacceptable. Dick sword? Uh, no. Not the sword. worst question that I've heard about a good you <laughs> production <laughs> scale. Uh, let's see. Oh yeah, and then um, yeah, the, the stream, the stream tomorrow. Somebody's already answered that, but I think it's 6 p.m. Eastern time, 3 p.m. Pacific time. Yeah, that's the, when that's when the Sony announcement happens. The Sony stream starts, um, which yeah. which we'll also have up on our site. Um, not on Twitch, I don't believe, but it will be on Polygon.com. And then uh, and then we'll be doing a live show right after that. Yeah. So this is a little a, like minor stealth sequence. You can cut down all these cameras and. Um, you can avoid line of sight here. I think there's actually some like a hidden. I guess I don't want to spoil that. There's some like there's some hidden. Uh, there's some other collectibles in this game that you can find that are not the um, severed arms, and not the uh, VR missions. Mike, as a as somebody who who is a fan of, of Platinum's work, um, Flying Nimbus wants to know how does this game compare to other. Other games' combat systems, in particular, he asks if it's at all like Bayonetta's or better than that. I, I, I mean, I, I think Bayonetta is, is more like you know just the evolution of Devil May Cry. This is, this is not that type of game. This is not a game that's about like performing lengthy combos and chaining together things like you know gun and uh, sword attacks. Sure. Um, and then you know. I, I think it really does stand on its own. There's obviously some similarities between the systems in here and Vanquish and Bayonetta, but um, I, I, th I think the, like I said in the review, I think the focus on the emphasis on, on uh, forward moving action the entire time is, is what really separates it from everything else. Because Bayonetta was very much about like those very carefully timed dodge moves. Mm -hmm. um, uh, which time stuff? Yeah, which time. Um, so you can. There's some parallels there, obviously, because you've got that slowed down action, for, you know, careful, precise movements. But, but this is just a very different approach. But I, I think it's a, uh, it's um, you know, in line with all that stuff, and, and and just as fun, but but has a different flavor to it. Arthur Flame Viper is uh, asking you to use the new skills that you got. I don't know how. <laughs> so uh, actually, Arthur, if you bring up the start menu, the pause menu. With the start button. <laughs> Thank you. On the controller, the Xbox 360 controller you're holding in your hand. If you go to help, yeah, I'm there. You can see the move list, um, so you can see how to do all of these um, things that uh, are a apparently new to you. Um, well, I've but like never the looked at the help before. Yeah. I'm like um, someone in the south. I don't look at the help. <laughs> um, Arthur, we're just trying to get you some help. Yep. That was that was a pretty good one. Yeah, um, yeah. Racism, um, not racist at all. <laughs> um, but so uh, there, there. One of the moves I think you bought was the was the thunder strike, and that's probably near the bottom, which is basically like this almost like force push that Raiden can do, and I think it's like back forward, um, or like away forward on the analog stick, and then like X. Uh, I'm not 100 percent sure, but. It does give you a rundown of, of all of his various moves. Rolling thunder, sky high. Um, I miss Ninja Gaiden so much. <laughs> I miss when. What, Ninja you, what are you talking about? Just, Ninja Gaiden Three. Yeah, it just came out a little I while ago. Yeah. You can play it. You can play it again if you want. I can't wait for them to fuck up Ninja Gaiden Two even more on the Vita. Yeah. Uh, 
Shameful Sinner says, do you guys think the next consoles will be cross-platform capable nope. as far as multiplayer is concerned? Nope. No way. Probably not. Not a chance in hell. There's no reason for them to do that. Yeah. I'm assuming it's Lightning Strike is what we're thinking. So. Uh, yeah, that's that's it, yeah. But um, one of the, uh, so the defensive offense, the defensive offense move is uh, something I don't think a lot of people know about. Um, yeah, there you go. Check What's the defensive up. offensive move? That would be A and X at the same time. Oh, yeah, that could be useful. Yeah. So, yeah, like, the, it, it is a dodge move. I didn't really find it all that useful because once you once you become really familiar with parrying and, and, uh, and you know, you learn a lot of the enemy moves, move sets, um, you don't really find yourself needing to dodge or run away that often. But if you are kind of like bunched up and getting gecko gang banged, um, it's helpful to get out of those situations. Yeah, careful. So careful. Uh, he heard me. Yeah. Who even cares, man? <laughs> well, I know. That's, that's <laughs> what I'm like. Just you know what? Whenever you hear that, you're just like, okay, let's fucking go for it. So, Mike, clearly you love this game. I did love this game. I want to go play it right now. Arthur, you're you're seemingly a little bit more lukewarm on it, but you there are things about it that you're enjoying as well. Yeah, I think that there are good parts. You love the camera. I mean, let's let's get back to that. You're What's not to fan. love about the camera? Mm -hmm. Okay, Arthur, I'm gonna give you a little. I'm gonna show you a little Easter egg here. Well, not sure. an Easter egg, but turn around. No, don't go through that door. I'm not going through the door. Okay, go over to a little, the. We're a couple seconds. Walk back to where you were uh, when you just killed those two dudes. There's a couple fans, a couple rotating fans. Up oh yeah, the I've actually done this level before. Oh, okay. and Found what was here. All right, never mind. But there actually is, I think, another uh, hidden secret in this area, or, or so I've heard. I, I haven't actually seen it myself. You've heard um, rumors. Yeah. I've heard rumors. So Arthur, did you know that this game has hidden cats in it as well? No, I didn't. I'm Tell trying to get you to fall in love with this game. Um, but there I, are. I, it's you know what like. Uh, I, I think that there's stuff to like about it. I just, my priorities are a little different, and the camera, like, really, really, really hurts my enjoyment of this game and the spots where it makes itself known. Yeah, I think, I, I think unfortunately, you've, you've seen the worst that the camera has to offer. Um, and... That seems like a mistake to have the worst your camera will ever behave <laughs> at the beginning yeah. of the game. I mean, you know, in the beginning of the game, when you're fighting Ray, uh, the Ray and, um, and uh, you know, chasing after Sundowner, it's, it's not that bad there. But it's it's these fights, like the Mistral and LQA4I, that are just the absolute worst. Um, I can show you a better time than we have a question from Flying Nimbus. He wants to know how replayable is the game. I know, Mike, oh, yeah. you said in the review it's very replayable. That's that's part of the part of what's good about it. Um, do you want to talk a little bit about the ways in which it's replayable, or what you know what you get out of replaying it? Yeah, so, you know, obviously there are uh, multiple difficulty levels in the game, and you can unlock Revengeance difficulty. Uh, I, I, I'm pretty sure it's after the first time you play it. Um, you know, there's a new ga game plus mode where all your weapons and skills will carry over. So you, I'm playing the game a second time, and I'm, I'm playing it on hard, but um, I'm actually not finding it that difficult because I have... Uh, because all my weapons are upgraded and I have access to Mistral's um, pole arm. Uh, uh, so that means uh, 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 those fuckers. Oh, uh, I get it. Yeah. Sorry. That's when I Joke. That's, that's okay. They can't all be winners, guys. No. <laughs> stay, stay, with the, stay with the racist stuff, Arthur. That oh. seems to be working for you. So. <laughs> no, I've heard that before, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Um... Okay, so the, the, there are, you know, there are a lot of things that you would see in, in any game, right? There's like a bunch of hidden collectibles. Uh, honest, there's VR missions that you can find um, on these like laptops that are hidden throughout the, the game. I only found about half of them in my first playthrough. Um, there's the collectible um, cyborg arms, and uh, you get, uh, it unlocks things at... 
10, 20, and 30 uh, arms as you collect them throughout the game. Like a, a suit for Raiden, and then I think a weapon for Raiden. I'm not sure what the third unlockable thing is. Um, but you know, it, I, 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 I kind of... I kind of went through the first half of the game kind of lazily and then and then really sprinted through the last half of it. So I haven't gone through the last half and really kind of fleshed out the story with codec conversations and things like that. You know, the the long the um, higher tier difficulties, they definitely add some interesting twists to the way that um, the game is laid out. There, there are some remixed uh, enemy encounters and uh, the uh, Ra Raiden's window for parrying and blocking uh, is limited. It's shortened it as you play on harder difficulties. Okay. So, it, you know, I, I, it's, I think it's the kind of game where you can go back and, and really kind of push yourself you to see how your ideals, um, then surely to see just how perfectly you can play this game. Um, there are some achievements that are associated with S ranking every single battle uh, on the highest difficulty. Sure. Um, I'm never going to do that. Because that is insane. Yeah, I'm not a sadist. Um, I'm sorry, I'm not a masochist. Um, but you are a sadist. Let's be. Well, clear. I, yes, that's why. I, that's why I gave this game a nine. I want everybody to play it <laughs> and be punished. Uh, no, it's um, you know, I, it is. It, it's pretty short the second time you play it. Like I, I'm probably gonna beat the game in about three to four hours the second time because I'm skipping every cutscene. Um, and I, I, I have figured out a lot of these boss battles, and you know, because my weapons are so highly upgraded that um, some of these fights last a very short period of time. So, Bannon is not in this game, but there is a woman in this game. Yes. She's kind of armed. Pretty good. She, yeah, she's kind of a nightmare. Hey, you blocked that, Arthur. Not that, bro. There you go. Well. How do you guys feel about video games? I think I'm they can relieve him. This is a pretty video game ass video game. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's right. Mm hmm. Yeah. God damn it. You, you can parry those two. Parry, 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 parry. I'll tell you, you know, I, I think if there were one thing that I would really like to never see in a video game again, it's a prompt that asks me to shake a stick back and forth. Yes! Like, I think we can stop doing that now. That and has I'm been in so many games that I've been playing recently, including games that I like. It's, it's frustrating every time, because I'm just like, this isn't good. Yeah. It's I don't not think fun. we need to do that anymore. I mean, I'm okay with some, you know, you know, really quick button pressing now and then. But analog stick shaking is not my cup of tea. And I would really like for us to not do that anymore. Us, yeah. the people who don't make video games. No. Uh, as Polygon has decided that we're not going to allow that in video games anymore. <laughs> right, yeah. Um, we conformed all of the publishers. Yep. No, I agree. I think there is a place for, uh, for quick time events. Those work sometimes. But that specifically is very frustrating. Yeah. Uh, apparently, Talavir says Kevin Dent says he has sources saying the PS4's price will be announced tomorrow. Holy shit, that would be pretty impressive. I would trust Kevin Dent. Um, I would love to. I would love to get a price. I think that Kevin is a more reliable source than not. Uh, sometimes, yeah. The thing about sources is that they can be right at first, yeah, and then they yeah. end up being wrong because things change. Things change. Yeah, mm -hmm. things change. And Pactor is actually the same way. Sure. Um, okay, this is this is actually where this fight gets kind of the worst. 
But you're, you're doing better than I did the last time I did this fight. Right the there. girl singing in over the music right now, I think, is the singer from Kidney Thieves. Well, really? Yeah. Huh. All right. She does solo stuff now. She actually, she actually had a Kickstarter or something, um, and I linked it, and now she tweets at me every now and then. And she was telling me that she did it. Oh, that's awesome. That's really cool. Which is weird, because I was in the Kidney Thieves when I was in college. Yeah. I have never heard of this thing. Um, did you play Deus Ex Invisible War? I know, I didn't. Uh, there's a virtual pop star uh, in, a, in Deus Ex Invisible War, and that's the music from that pop star is actually the Kidney Thieves. I am a, I am a fan of more and more video games starting to pick really good times to use actual like music like actual songs with lyrics it's, it's happening more and more and it's it's kind of cool most uh, most of the boss fights boss fights in this game have, have this kind of like musical format so then it's pretty interesting I, yeah so, i actually like the music a lot more than i thought i would yeah uh, yeah, Peter a... McBride brings up Far Cry 3, which is uh, a great example. Ironically. I just played. I played the uh, the um, flamethrower mission in Far Cry 3 last night, and it's pretty awesome. And the music kicks in. Yeah, this fight seems to really take a long time. But it, it ends in the, the most... Anti is it anticlimactic? Kind of. You did you did finish this fight before? No, I didn't. Oh, okay. Your expert so tutelage has helped me, Mike. Excellent. Well, here you go. This is, this is going to look very familiar. Death scene. Bullshit. <laughs> there you go. Whoa. I don't think that pole arm is supposed to be doing that. It's a little a strange. Glitch? A glitch? Mm -hmm. well, maybe maybe it's supposed to be there, but this is one of my favorite things about the game is that you've just chopped all these characters into like millions of tiny discrete pieces and then like oh, before I go I want to just have this one Kodak conversation with you. No. Hold off. I am sorry. One man pizza points out that cool guys don't look at explosions. That's true. Raiden does pretty much turn away from the yeah. explosion. I know. Someone said fuck. Yeah, I guess they they did. You will never fall. What is this talk about? I'm gonna give uh, Mark McDonald the surliest look over the localization in this game. The dialogue Why? is so bad. She's not talking to you, uh, I don't know. <laughs> I, I think when you, when you it's tongue in cheek. Yeah. I mean, you know, they they have to work with some source material, right? It's true. So maybe they just did a great job capturing the feel of the Japanese VO. Yeah. I actually like Mark. Mark is a great guy. Pepper, Pepper Doc says, these people are so Japanese, they became French. I don't know what that means, but I like it. I, I feel like I've heard that joke before. What is that from? I don't know. <laughs> Maybe Pepper Doc will tell us. To Google. But now they will be. Yes, I like that. Uh, I was gonna bring up that there are like moments of death on the soundtrack, and um, I like that. Who was it? It was uh, Duder McBrohan. Was like as someone who legitimately likes dubstep. I like that part. But it's. I think the the, the music is, is presented pretty inoffensively, even if you don't like the genre. Bastard blew himself up. Crazy son of a bitch. I see. Time to get you out of there. We're sending a helicopter. Secure an LT. Yeah, the the FPS is going all crazy right now. I think that's just on the stream. I don't think that's 
Um, it was not in the game, right, Arthur? No. Uh, although, actually, I mean, when you slow down time to do Zendatsu stuff, like, the frame rate can really start to chug. Sure. Okay, there you go. You've done chapter one. God. God. How many chapters yep. are there in this game? Uh, there's the prologue and seven chapters. All right, well, that's, uh... That's probably plenty. Yeah, that's Wait, what? Show I thought you, you that got, you're not going to show the sombrero? This is the moment. Wait, is... Okay, we can oh, show the what? sombrero. God. So needy. You have to just I lied for showing the sombrero. sombrero. I didn't realize we were that close. Yeah. There you go. You got the stranger. I have the pole arm. Mm-hmm. Uh... Oh, because it's a pole... Customize Raiden's body. I take it that's what I want to do. Yeah, you want to do that. This is where you can. Uh, I, I you have to purchase, I believe, the uh, unique weapon. Oh, okay. Does the pole arm? No, you can't. You can't purchase the sombrero yet. But you can buy the pole arm. Okay. So. So what, what the hell am I trying... Where the hell is the sombrero? Well, you just gotta start the next chapter. Oh. And you'll see Raiden in um, sombrero form. But shortly after... Because this is where the sewer levels are gonna come in, but to watch the beginning of the sewer levels is, is maybe gonna ruin one of the best um, joke references in this game, um, which was, I believe, a Mark McDonald joint. <laughs> oh, well, then we have to watch it. Okay, well... People uh, prepare to be spoiled on one of the best. They just watched Ice an references. entire chapter of the game. I'm just saying, this, <laughs> it's this, not really. It's a joke, so it's okay. This, yeah, this one joke, one. It's a very good Vanilla Ice reference, but. So you've got some kind of disguise lined up, right? Yep, all set. Hope so. You'd be a little conspicuous just walking the streets. Seriously. Thanks, Kev. I'll blend right in. Yeah. A little yeah. conspicuous. Well, just get into the sewer system ASAP. <laughs> this is the best, dumbest thing. <laughs> you sure you want the K9000 there along for this one? I had the good doctor make some adjustments along with the repairs. K9000. That's a little bit lazy, but. So, yeah, I say let's throw him a buddy. Get it? Wordplay. My exoskeleton resembles a canine. <laughs> Canines enjoy bones. I'm using on I'm, two I'm, I'm wearing a sombrero like that to the next Polygon Let's meeting. Go. See, this is a uh, Duter McBurhan and I are on the same page. He says this is the kind of dumb I can get behind. Yes. Yeah. It's anime dumb. Yeah. You know, I think the reason that uh, his butt looks so crazy is because he's always wearing high heels. <laughs> I hope he has insurance on that car. Is he a mariachi player? <laughs> is that what he is? <laughs> Sorry, I think this is great. Man, so many ass shots. It's right. I'm in the sewer system. All right, let's get started. Your mission is to investigate the Desperado affiliated research. I'm in the sewer system. There you go. Area. According to the intel from our client, the lab's been dumping illegal waste into those sewers. FYI, they're also involved with the cartels in human trafficking. Allegedly, anyway. <sighs> this just gets better and better. Tell me about it. We need you to infiltrate the lab and find out everything you can. Of course, you'll have to find it first. We still don't know the exact location. So I'm looking for anywhere the lab might hook up with the sewers? Yep. If they're actually dumping waste, they've got to link up somehow. Find that connection. 
sneak into the Waiting lab for this joke. And see if you when can is find this joke coming? Oh, wait, I'm sorry. You actually have to no like do a fight before you get to the joke. So I don't know what? if you want to. Oh, yeah. right. Too much work. Just turn it off. Well, Just we'll see. shut it down. Do we have All right, people, get to this level. There's going to be something there? really funny. Not um, really. Mike Maybe promised if you don't laugh, he will pay for your copy of uh, Metal Gear Rising Revengeance. Yeah, I'll I'll give you um, the information for our expense account. You can file it. Arthur will approve it. And um, should be good to go. Oh, fuck. I need to file an expense report. Thank you for reminding me. Yeah. All right. Well, we need to we need to turn off the streams so that Arthur can do that. Um, thanks everybody for watching. Uh, a reminder that we will be doing more streams very soon. Um, in particular, tomorrow after Sony's big press event, where they will, they are rumored to be revealing the PlayStation 4 or whatever it ends up, whatever their next gen console ends up being called. Um, we will be doing a a live show following that press conference, um, where various Polygon staff members will uh, will be calling in to give their opinions, talk about it, fight, whatever we have to do. There will probably be some arguing. I bet we will argue about a few things. Yeah, because Chris Grant is so frequently wrong that it's hard not to point it out to him. <laughs> Great. Uh, I'm not going to say anything related to that because I don't want to get fired. But thanks, thanks for tuning in, everybody, and we will see you soon. Yep. Bye. Bye.